Welcome back, everybody. It's tea time this morning here on The Balancing Act, and we are looking forward to throwing a wonderful tea party, right, Christy? Absolutely. It is a lovely day for a tea party, shall we say? Now, before our party starts, let's sit and have a cup of tea as we watch a short story about this wonderful beverage. That's right. And when we return, we're going to transform this into a fabulous tea party and meet with a very special guest. But first, let's take a look, Beth. The year was 1706, and a young weaver named Thomas Twining had just opened Tom's Coffee House of London, where he debuted a new Asian beverage he discovered from the East Indian Company. Decades of success continued, and Thomas's son Daniel expanded the tea company to the new land of America, even landing the governor of Boston as a customer. In fact, the company's tea was so highly regarded that a distinguished writer noted, it was not Twining's tea the Boston rebels tossed into the sea. Fast forward to 1837, and generations of Twinings later, Twining's tea is on the shopping list of Queen Victoria, earning Twinings their first royal warrant, the highest honor bestowed upon a tea company. Even through World War II, nothing could stop the now famous Strand Shop in London, which produced tea for the Red Cross and YMCA during wartime. 300 years after its founding, Stephen Twining, the 10th generation of Twinings, continues the family tradition as a roaming ambassador for this wonderful beverage. Now that was really great. I feel like I know a lot about tea now. Are you kidding? I'm an expert. I'm ready to go. <laughs> now joining our little tea party to teach us the finer points of enjoying tea, please welcome none other than the tea ambassador himself, Mr. Stephen H.B. Twining. Welcome to our show. Well, thank you, ladies. Lovely to be with you. Now, this is delightful. We're having our own tea party here. And I gotta tell you, I made this tea this morning and I don't think I did it right. I kinda just grabbed the water, put it in the microwave, stuck the tea bag in and... Hey, listen, good start with the fresh cold water. Okay. Sticking a tea bag in a cup or a mug, no problem with that at all. However, We're going well. Microwaves, I'd rather have an electric kettle oh. uh, or a stove kettle because you've got more control. Because it's just at the moment the water hits the boil that you need to add it on to the black teas or the her herbal infusions. But for green teas or white teas, you want to let it cool down 10 or 15 degrees because white tea or green tea may go bitter if you add water on at boiling point. Oh. Yeah, which is a, a very handy tip. And then the best tip is, and this is what, where most people go wrong, be patient. It takes three minutes to get the full flavor out of the tea. That's really simple. I could do that. Now, you just mentioned, you said the white teas, the black teas, herbal yeah. teas. There are so many varieties. That's yes. what I love about tea. Teas like this. wine, very great. I mean, chai, yes, inspired by uh, the, the Indian tradition of drinking tea. So you've got the lovely spicy flavors in there. Lady Grey and orange and lemon peel, more delicate than Earl Grey. Yeah. And oh yes, a, de a decaf English breakfast. So obviously you can have that as the full-on English breakfast, which I love first thing in the morning. Mm. Taking the caffeine out helps you sleep at night. And that is a perfect example of a completely naturally caffeine-free drink. Strictly speaking, no tea in chamomile because it's not actually a, from the tea plant. And green tea, yeah, the, uh, associated with those wonderful health benefits, the refreshment, the revivement. A tip on that, again, wouldn't drink that with milk. The green tea is oh. too light to have milk and you just wipe the flavor out. And you just mentioned the health benefits. There yeah. really are so many when it comes to teas. Well, yes, absolutely. I mean, tea to me is not a just a healthy drink. It's a well-being drink. It's all about keeping you well over the long term. So it's the, such a rich source of antioxidant. Tea always has less than half the amount of caffeine you find in a cup of coffee, oh. all the way down to the decafs, which are virtually caffeine-free, to the, uh, the infusions, which are uh, completely caffeine-free. A cup of tea without milk or sugar, less than one calorie a cup. How good is that? It's great for washing yeah. your waistline. And it rehydrates you. It's not a diuretic liquid. I love this. Ladies and gentlemen, it is tea, tea time. Thank you Excellent. so much for joining us. I feel Pleasure. enlightened. Like that. It's fantastic to have you here. Now, to learn more about tea and get some great tips, you can go to twiningsusa.com, and it's a great place, so be sure to check it out. It's a check good. this out. This is great. Oh, oh I love this. This is it's such a rich you. flavor. It it's is. so nice. Yes. Pomegranate's coming, bursting through. Oh, is this through. a pomegranate? Yeah. yeah. Ah. Thank you.